In this video, we'll do a quick review of C++. This is a Hello World program in C++. It's just like the C Hello World program, except we're going to use C out instead. And we're also going to use the C++ libraries. Now, C++ libraries do not have the .h on the end, and C libraries do have a .h on the end. Now, I named my file main.cpp. Um, the extension .cpp stands for C++. And to compile it, we use the G++ and then the name of our file. And then we run it just like we did with the C program by running a.out. And we see the hello class. And just so you know, the git ignore file ha ignores the a.out because that's executable and we should not check that into our code repository. Now, because C++ has a lot of libraries, we need to worry about our namespace. We don't want to accidentally use names that are used in our library. For that reason, uh, C++ has a very good namespace uh, functionality built in, and we can define our own namespace, and we can also declare that we're using other namespaces. So STD stands for standard namespace, and the standard namespace is the namespace that most of the C++ libraries use, including the IO stream, where Cout and Nlined are defined. So before, I didn't have the using namespace standard, so I had to use the scope operator, which is two colons, and I had to put standard, then the scope operator, and the name of the function that I wanted to use. But if I want to avoid using that, I can declare that I'm using the namespace std and then take uh, that scope operator out and it will still work just the same. Now I'm, I've created a class called animal and this is it called the class declaration and we have the public uh, properties or uh, methods of the class and the private. Now, usually you uh, keep your variables or fields private and then your methods can be public or private. This right here is the constructor and then a method to print out some information. So this is a class declaration. Now we need to implement both the constructor and the print info method. So to implement it, we use the name of our class, then the scope operator, two colons, and then uh, this is the name of the constructor. Constructors are always named the same thing as the class in C++, and we have the parameters, and we just set our name and owner to those parameters. And then finally, we have the print info method that we just use Cout to print the names of our owners. Then in our main method, we declare an animal called dog, and the dog's name is Fred, and the owner's name is George. And then we'll go ahead and print out do dog's info. So let's go ahead and compile and run this. So we'll compile it and run this, and we see that uh, the dog is printed out. Now, this dog is created and stored on the stack. So we can uh, declare variables and store them on the stack. That means memory is auto-managed for us. When we exit the main method or whatever method we declared the animal in, the animal will be deleted off of the stack. So if we want the dog to live longer than the method, then we need to put the, the dog on the heap. So as an example of putting an animal on the heap, we'll, we'll create a pointer to an animal called cat and we'll set the cat equal to a new animal. So in order to get uh, declare a object on the heap, we use the new variable. And we'll call the animal names Mary, and um, Bob will be the owner. And then if we're going to, now that cat is a pointer, and dog is the actual uh, dog, but cat is a pointer, so to use, to print out information, we use this arrow operator, and that will print out the cat's information. And when we compile and run this, we see that we have Mary. Now there's one thing that we forgot to do. Whenever we put something on the heap, it's up to us to tell the system that we're done with that memory, 
So we have to give it back, and that's where the delete operator comes in, and we would delete the cat. Now we don't have to delete the dog because we put the dog on the stack and the stack is auto-managed. But we do, whenever we use the new operator, later on we have to remember to delete it. And running that one more time, you see that everything still works. I want to introduce you to a special, special method in C++ called the deconstructor. If you notice, it is the same name as our class, but it has a tilde in front of it. And we can declare the deconstructor in our class declaration, and then we need to implement it as well. And you can see that I'm just printing out animal, and the name of the animal is getting deleted. Now this deconstructor is called whenever the animal's memory is given back to the system. So I've commented out this delete cat, but let's see if that method ever gets called. So we could see that Fred, who's the dog, is getting deleted. So why is Fred getting deleted? Well, because at the end of the method, Fred, uh, or dog that was declared inside of this method is stored on the stack. At the end of the method, whenever we exit the method, we the system automatically removes anything declared on the stack. And But before it removes it, it always calls the deconstructor if a deconstructor is declared. So that's why dog, the dog, Fred, is and prints out this before he gets deleted. Now, if we were to uncomment this line and run the code again, we'll also see that Mary the cat will get deconstructed as well. And see, animal Mary is getting deleted. If you notice, Mary gets deleted before Fred because Mary gets deleted right here and Fred gets deleted when we exit the method. Now to illustrate why we have constructors, I've created another class called address with just a constructor and a print address method. It just stores a string with the address. So here's the constructor and here is um, the print address method, just a basic address class. Now to the class animal, we're gonna add that the animal has a field called address of that type of class. Then, in order to get this to work in our constructor, because an animal also has an address, we need to construct the address. And this is a syntax you do that in C++. We have our normal constructor here, and notice we also take in a new parameter called string address, and notice I've added that into the um, definition up here. And then we do the colon, and this calls the constructor to build the address. And notice this name has to match that name right there, not the type. So that constructs our address, and then we um, don't need that, but then we uh, just uh, save our name and our owner. And down when we uh, create our dog and cat, we need to give it an address as well. And compiling and running, we get this. Now, if our print info also wants to print the address, we can just go address.printinfo. And compile and run again. And sorry, that was print address, not print intro info. And now we see that we get the address of our animals getting printed out as well. Well, that didn't do anything to tell us why we have uh, deconstructors, but that is to have a class encapsulate an object inside of it. But another thing that we can do is make this a pointer. That way we have a pointer to an address, but the address isn't part of us. Now carrying that change through, um, so we've declared that the animal, instead of having an address stored inside of it, it just has a pointer to an address stored inside of it. So we've modified the constructor to go ahead and point that address to a new address, and we're calling it the constructor, passing that string in. Then, uh, other than that, on our print address, uh, or our print info method, we, instead of using a period, now, since address is a pointer, we use this arrow notation and compiling and running, everything still works the same. But we have a little problem. We're deleting our dog automatically. We're deleting the cat. But whenever, what about this, these addresses that I create right here? 
when did I delete them? And I didn't delete them. So now I have a memory leak inside of my program because these addresses never get deleted. So when do we delete them? That's the deconstructor's job is to free up any memory that it might have claimed. So we'd want to delete our address inside of the deconstructor. And compiling and running again, we see that everything works just fine. And uh, just to show you um, a little bit, let's go ahead and add a deconstructor to our address and make sure that it's getting called. So I've just commented out that delete address to show you that it won't get called. But in my address class, I, I declared that there's a deconstructor and I also implemented it and it will just say whatever the address is, is deconstructing. So let's go ahead and compile and run this. And you can see no addresses are getting deconstructed. Even the dog is not getting deconstructed. He gets deconstructed automatically, but his pointer gets removed from the stack. But what the pointer points to never gets deconstructed. So back in our deconstructor for our animal, let's go ahead and delete our addresses. And now we could see that uh, that Kahuku is getting deconstructed and Laie is getting deconstructed. So that's one of the hard things with uh, memory management in C++. Whenever you use a new operator, it's up to the programmer to later on call the delete operator. So now let's throw a wrench in things to learn a little bit more about memory management in C++. Let's modify our constructor so it no longer takes in the address as a parameter and instead create a method to set our address. And let's just pass in a string, we'll create a new address and assign that new address to our address pointer. So you can see I modified the constructor to no longer take in that third parameter and we just make our address equal to a null pointer in the constructor. And um, everything else we've left the same. So we've taken off our LaEA and Kuhuku addresses on these on the dog and the cat. And let's go ahead and compile this and run it and see what happens. And you can see, oh no, we had a segmentation fault or a seg fault. And what that means is we had some sort of exception that killed our program. And the exception that happened in this case is we accessed memory where we shouldn't have. Now, unfortunately, C does not tell you or C++ does not tell you the exception that happened. But the best way to debug against this is, well, there's two ways. One, you can learn how to use the debugger that's built into Linux. But um, the easier, quicker way um, that you should probably try first is by printing stuff out. And luckily, we are printing a lot of stuff out. Just make sure we use the end line when we do C out. Because if we don't have a new line with printf or an end line, then we don't flush our buffer. So if we print something out, we put something in the buffer. And then if our program crashes, we'll never see what we printed out. But an end line makes sure the buffer gets flushed out to the screen before it continues so that we'll know exactly where our program crashed. And we know our program crashed right after this line. So if you have a crashing program, just start printing out C outs with end lines and figure out which line is causing it to crash. And that will hopefully narrow down where your bug is. And you can tell that pretty obvious we have no address and we're trying to print it out. And that's going to cause a crash. So to protect against that, we'll just make sure that our address is not null before we print it out. Now, another place that we want to do that is um, in our deconstructor, we probably don't want to delete an address that does not exist. So if our address is not null, then go ahead and delete our address. So we'll compile and run again. And you see that we're not crashing. Now, let's go ahead and try uh, to get these guys addresses. So after our dog, we'll go ahead and tell our dog to set his address to Laie. And we'll tell our cat to set his address to Kahuku. 
So let's go ahead and run that and see what happens. And everything seems to be working out just fine. Now let's go ahead and move our cat. Let's say that our cat decides to move to down to Haula. And run our program again. And everything seems to be working okay, but we have a memory leak because if you notice, Kahuku, Haula, and Lai are getting deconstructed, but Kahuku never gets deconstructed. So how come Kahuku never gets deconstructed? Well, this set address method, we had an address that was pointing to Kahuku, and then we just pointed that pointer to a new address, and we left the old one in memory without bothering to delete it. So if we're going to change it, we better check right here if our address doesn't equal null. That means we're, we're going to delete it, an address or not use it anymore, so we better give that memory back. And compiling one more time. And we can see that Kahuku gets deconstructed before we assign the address pointer to Haula. All right, so things are getting kind of crowded in this one file. We have the address class declaration, the address class implementation, the um, animal class declaration, the animal class implementation, and our main method all in the same file. Now, the, there's a couple of problems with this. One, you have to search through all, a lot of lines of code. And two is the order of declaration. So by the way, if you haven't been able to uh, get yours to compile, we have to declare the address class before we declare the animal class because the animal class uses the address class. So since the animal class uses the address class, then we uh, cannot, uh, we have better know what the address class is first. So if I already declare the address class below the animal class, it won't work. So let's go ahead and separate these out into files. I'm gonna do this off camera and then we'll bring you back in and show you what, I'm, what I did. Okay, so now my main.cpp file only contains the main method. This is much more readable and easy to find. So what happened to all the other code? Well, I created an animal or an address.h file. And in the address.h file, I have the declaration of my address class. And notice I still have to include my libraries and my uh, use my namespace. Now, Inside the address.cpp class, I included all the implementation files. And I did the same thing for the animal as the class declaration, and the animal.cpp as all the implementation of the animal class. Now, when I compile this, I'm not going to know the declaration of the animal class, so this is going to be unknown to the compiler, and it's going to crash. So what we need to do is include our animal.h file in this file right here so that it knows about the declaration of the animal class. You're gonna have to do the same thing for the address class as well. We need to include address.h. Now, um, in our animal header file, we're using address. So I better include the address.h file. Now notice I only include the header file. I do not include the implementation. I, as the animal class does not need to know how the address class is implemented. All it needs to know is that there is an address class and these are the public methods. It shouldn't need to know what the private uh, variables are, but in C++, there's no way to separate that out. So the address class uh, or the animal class only needs to know that there is an address class and what its public methods are. So that's why we just include the header file there. Now in our main.cpp file, we want to include our animal.h file as well so that he knows about the animal class or that's not going to be defined. And that simplifies each one of our files and it separates our classes into different files. But now we have a little more work to do when we compile. We have to compile each CPP file on its own. So uh, we, we do it with the dash C option 
I believe that stands for compile. So it's not going to create an executable. Instead, it creates .o files, which the O stands for object. Now those O files contains the ones and zeros of the code inside of that CPP file, but they're not combined together to create an executable. So um, before we move on though, let's go to our git ignore and ignore all .o files because we don't need to check uh, compiled code into our code repository. Now finally, we need to make an executable out of those object files. And the way we do that is called, and this is called linking. So we use G++ and we name out all of our .o files. And we use the dash O option. And the final word that we, or thing that we put here is the name of the executable we want to create. So this will link all of those O files together. And now we can run it. And you can see the program ran just like it did before we separated it into different files. Now the executable, instead of being named a.out, is named animal or whatever you put here in when you linked all of your object files together. So of course we want to uh, ignore our executable inside of uh, git ignore so that we don't check it into our code repository. You know, executables and object files are large binary files and it's probably not a good idea to uh, track them in your code repository. So now let's say that we wanna change our address uh, Dot .cpp file, we want to change the way uh, things are printed out and maybe we'll just make this uh, just a small change and have it print out animal address instead of just address. And uh, they could be major changes as well. So when we make that change, we need to recompile. But we don't have to recompile anything. We only have to recompile the things that uh, have changed. So in this case, we only have to recompile our address.cpp uh, file. Now once I recompiled that, I need to link it back together, so I'd have to rerun the link command. And after I rerun the link command, if I run my executable, we can see that now it's printing out animal address instead of just address. Now let's say that we we, uh, that we decide to change the address.h file. And in that case, we're gonna maybe add a um, update address method. And that means we'll have to go to our address.cpp file and update and implement that method. And so we, we're going to take in a parameter and uh, for the new address and assign that to our current address. I better have the function declaration also take in a parameter for that. And now what do we have to recompile? Well, I have to, because I changed the address.h file, I obviously need to recompile the address class, but that's also gonna change my animal file uh, class as well because um, address.h has changed, so we need to recompile our animal class as well. So let's go ahead and recompile those two. So after recompiling those, we need to relink everything back together, and we can run our executable again. Uh, of course, I haven't changed my main.cpp at all, but that's what we have to do. Now, as you can imagine, this can start to get uh, a little confusing whenever you change files and keeping track of, okay, now that I've made this change, that means that I have to recompile this and that and this. So that's why they decide to come up with something called a make file. Now the make file will, uh, will list out all of the dependencies and then using timestamps, it'll figure out what, if a timestamp gets updated, it'll figure out what it needs to compile based on the timestamps of the different files inside of our folder. So to do that, we're going to add a new file into our folder and we're gonna just call it make file with a capital M, no space, and file is not capitalized either. And we'll go ahead and start editing that. So here's what you put in your make file. Now you start with the name of your executable 
and then a colon, and then all of the files that depend on that. So if any of these files changes or has a newer timestamp than animal, then it will run this command. It also does it recursively. It'll check the animal.o, and then it'll see if any of these files have updated. And if any of they, them have updated, it'll first recompile the animal.o file, and then it will relink everything together. So the way that I came up with this is, first of all, for executable, it depends on all the .o files. For our main.o, it's main.cpp. If we update main.cpp, we need to recompile. And our main.cpp uh, file includes the animal.h file, so that we include animal.h on there. Now, our animal.o file, of course, we want to compile that with this command depends on the animal.cpp and the animal.h. And if you look at animal.h, it also includes address.h. So if that updates, then we also need to recompile the animal class. And then we have the address class as well. So you'll just have to type this in. One uh, key thing, make sure you use the tab on this line right here to get this indented. If you don't do this, the make file will not work. It depends on the tab. Uh, it's kind of like a syntactic white space in Python where we're grouping the instructions underneath a function together. So this is a, a make file. And then um, let's pull up our terminal window. To get that to run, we just type make. Now you can see it's, it checks all the timestamps and it's like, you know what? Animal is completely up to date. But let's say that we go and we update our animal h class. Now I'm just going to add a space in here and save it, but that's going to update the timestamp for this animal.h. Now I'll go down and type make, and you can see that it realized that it needed to recompile main.cpp because main includes animal.h. It knows that it needs to recompile animal.cpp because it requires that, and it also relinked everything together. Now another way that you can uh, update the timestamp. Now, normally you don't do this because you're writing code and then you're saving files and that updates your timestamp. But just a way to uh, pretend to update a timestamp is we could do the touch. And if I just touch main.cpp, that updates its timestamp. So we'll type make and it knows that it has to recompile main and remake everything together. You can also touch, say, animal.h and type make again. And now it knows that it has to recompile animal and main and link everything together. So now we don't, and once we got our make file set up, we don't have to worry about keeping track of what things we have to recompile. The only thing is, is when we introduce new files or new classes into our code, that we'll have to update and set up our make file correctly. Now there are tools that will automatically generate make files for us, but then, that's beyond the scope of this class. Now there is one more important thing to know when you're doing separating your code into separate files. Let's say that in our main.cpp, we decide to include address.h. Because address isn't specific to animals, maybe they could uh, be specific to people, we might have a people class, or we just might deal with addresses in our main function. So when we do that, let's go ahead and recompile. And to recompile, we just type make. And you can see now we have some errors. Now, um, the error is read the net definition of address class. So we look at our address.h, that line number it gave us, line seven. Um, and it's saying it's already included from line seven. And so why is it saying read de declaration? We only have this one time. But if we look at our main.cpp, first we include animal.h. So let's go to animal.h, and we see that we've included, inside animal.h, we include address.h. So we already have address.h. Now these includes are just like a, a way to copy and paste a file right into our code. So we copied and pasted animal.h in here, and that copied and pasted address.h, and now we're gonna copy and paste address.h again into our code and so that's why we have address.h listed or included two times and the 
we could try to reverse this. Let's see if maybe if we include address.h first and annual.h second, let's see if that fixes the error. And no, that doesn't work. What we really need to do is make sure that there is a way that we only include our header file once. So the way we're going to do that is with compiler directives. Compiler directives are any of these hashtag um, things in our code, and they tell the compiler to do certain things. You can even have a little bit of code. So we have if not defined address underscore h, do all of the following until we get to this end if down at the bottom. So if we haven't defined address dot h, we're going to define it. Then once we defined it, then and then we'll, we'll go ahead and include our address definition. Now once we've defined it, if we run across this again and it says if not defined uh, address dot h, then it uh, will skip over all this and not include it a second time. Now I'm putting this around the animal class, so I should probably say animal dot h not address dot h here. And then we'll also do the same thing for our address class. Just on our header file, we'll include the same thing as if we'll do address.h. So um, the class in our header file for our class definition, we just surround it if not defined address underscore h. Then we'll define address underscore h, define the class and then end if. So when we include this twice, the second time, it'll see, oh, I've already defined address.h, so it'll skip over it and not include it. So now if we type make, it's back to working again. And if you notice, make automatically knew that it had to recompile everything because we updated address.h and animal.h. And we can run our program and we're back to working. Now, now that we're including address.h and main.cpp, we should also add address.h as one of the dependencies of main.o.